Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Blizzard Watch Podcast. I'm Matt. I'm hosting. Um, I forgot to email myself the host email, so I have to actually check and find it. That's always good when you yourself don't keep the thing that you wrote. Always wonderful. Um, how y'all doing? Uh, we've had a busy week. Last week, uh, last Wednesday, I want to say, uh, a lot of stuff happened, and we talked about it last Thursday. So... You know, now we're doing one on Tuesday, and some of that stuff is still up to be talked about. But lots more stuff happened this week, so we're going to just try and segue right into this. First up, Dragonflight Season 4 is live right now. Uh, if you are listening to this live, it's live now. If you are listening to it recorded, it went live this week. Um, <laughs> lots of stuff going on. Uh, the dungeon realignment thing where they've they've rebalanced the difficulty and rewards of various dungeon levels. Uh, go ahead, Liz. It, which is an interesting thing they've done. I mean, it's kind of a reverse dungeon squish in which, you know, heroics have gotten harder with better rewards and Mythic Zero has gotten harder with better rewards and the Mythic Plus difficulty range, which is where you start to have more affixes and things, they're like way up on the higher end of the difficulty scale. So, But there, there's also less uh, levels. I think it only goes up to 10 now? Yeah, From, yeah, because... Yeah. Uh, a uh, heroic is now about the difficulty of mythic zero and mythic zero is about the difficulty of mythic eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. And so everything's, you know, the mythic difficulty range has all been, everything's been squished up. I think that works. That makes yeah. sense, right? It's, uh, it's been, it's been elevated, but also yes. there's less, yeah, less space. Uh, so um, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to jump and run any dungeons, but, uh, I, I think it's a really interesting idea. I think it's I think it's a good idea to make, you know, heroic and mythic zero dungeons and make them relevant for more than the first five minutes of an expansion. Yeah. And so absolutely. I'm Go ahead, and breed, breed more life into them like late in the expansion too, because we, we complain about mm -hmm. that a lot too, where where it's later on in the expansion, sometimes it, it just feels like it's impossible to get people to do some of that stuff because well, you know, they're focusing but on the mythic point. 20s or or in the what's the point category because then they're just waiting for the next expansion. This adds relevancy uh, to that content and actually gives you something to aspire and look forward to uh, or work towards the higher difficulty in general if that's something that you're really into. So, like, I already see one of our guildmates, Ado, has been hitting the mythic uh dungeons hard today like since uh servers came up like i'm watching him just go from dungeon to dungeon to dungeon to dungeon uh because that's what he likes to do and he likes chasing that mythic high so like it's it's good it's nice to see that yeah i, I also want to mention the antique bronze bullion which is used for buying gear upgrades mm -hmm. uh that's I don't know how to get it, honestly. I would try to find uh, that you, out. And go ahead. You you get it by killing raid bosses. Okay. It's so uh, it's basically kind of it's a form kind of also like a form of bad luck protection then. Uh yeah, I guess you could call it that. I mean it's kind of like the puzzling cartel dinar that we oh, had last okay. season. Yeah. Where you where you used it right, we got it right at the end of the expansion, and you can use it to buy that gear that you've never managed to get. Or if you're like me, you specifically used it just to buy transmog appearances that you hadn't gotten. Uh, so yeah, yes, that, that's that's, that's, that's up for all of season four, and I I am ninety nine percent sure you only get it through rating, but I'm I'm pretty sure you can get it through LFR. So it's like everyone can jump in and get it without too much work. And there's the awakened raids, of course, with their awakened loot as well. Uh, that's a different loot source. Basically, that bumps. Every awakened raid when the when the raid comes around this the, this week this week whose is it this week do you guys know because I been believe on, we're the TCR, I, so. I I believe we've gone back right? to the very first yeah. raid yeah yeah okay so uh, Which, vault, of vault. The, vault of the scary dragon people um, <laughs> and it's like that was that was a year ago how am I supposed to remember what that raid was yeah I, and, I'm gonna have to but I'm now the, to. when that becomes an awakened raid the gear is now awakened and it comes up in level to be close to what everyone has getting from other raids. Uh, so that's nice. Um, so all that's happening. Uh, I should, I'm going to list the various mythic dungeons that for mythic season four's mythic rotation, uh, Algathar Academy. That's the magic school one. Uh, the Brackenhide hollow, which is, you know, the, the, the gnolls who are doing bad stuff. Um, Halls of Infusion, which is, you know, what's going on with the Titans and the old gods and all that stuff? Here we go. Um, Neltharis, which is, you know, Neltharian's old pad, his his mm -hmm. surface work lab area, you know, before you, you go underground and find his real lab. So he kind of had a lot of labs. 
Um, Ruby life pools where your babysitting dragon babysitting can be done. Uh, the Azure vault. That's, that's not the one from, I can't remember. Is that the one from, uh, I want to say wrath of Lich King or no, Cataclysm? these are, nope. these are all nope, the current is... dungeons from okay. Dragonflight. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, they, they've, they've all got you know, mythic dungeons for season four. Not what I, this is. I'm sorry. I was bad. Yeah, no, I mean, no, this is the mythic. Uh, yeah, this is season four. Season four. Oh, but they're all just, but they just, yeah, they brought back all of the original Dragonflight dungeons and it's like, okay, here's your mythic, uh, yeah. mythic plus rotation for the season. It's, oh. uh, they're doing season four is really a victory. Kind of Dragonflight, you know? Yeah. Dragonflight's yeah, uh, you know, best of Dragonflight. Gotcha. Yeah. Except instead of being the best of Dragonflight, that's just everything. <laughs> you know, I um, liked this yeah. expansion, so, you know. Yeah, I think it's been a great expansion. It, it will continue to be a great expansion for a little while longer while we do, uh, while we work on this. But while all that's been going on and we've been, you know, there's, there's a lot to talk about. Um, do either of you have anything you particularly you want to pull out and talk about before we move on? I do think worth mentioning is one of the things you can do in season four. If you have been lucky enough to get one of the legendaries, this expansion, you can now upgrade it in season four. So, so, you know, you can use it more than one raid tier and, uh, man, one day an upgrade item <laughs> one day. Yes. Uh, well, one day healers will get a legendary. You get. <laughs> I did. Evoker's got a legendary last tier. I mean, that's, Totally One day healers will get a legendary, healers, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you know that we're gonna we're gonna see like Drakthir as playable like other races, so mm. maybe they'll get a healing legendary then. Hmm. But yeah, um, that is you can upgrade I, your legendaries. That is actually good to so, know. Which I mean, since people are like still just getting Fireleth, Fireleth, the axe, the fire axe that every that everyone wants. Yeah, I can't uh, pronounce it. Are, so you're you're saying far left, far left. I'm like you could be. <laughs> I can't tell you, but I I know which one you're talking about. Uh, it, so I mean, it makes a lot of sense to have an upgrade path for that immediately because otherwise, it took a long time to get that X, and you would just be going into this raid tier and oh, now I'm going to throw this X in the trash because I have something that's 50 eye levels higher. And but no, you can upgrade it, and the evokers can upgrade their legendary from uh, the previous raid tier. Who name I am forgetting, but it's it's a legendary. If you have it, you know you have it. I don't have to tell you what it is. You know. I don't have it. I, I don't play an evoker, so neither do I. Yeah. Mm. It, I'm not an evoker. I, I do not have the legendary. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but, yeah, so that that's happening. There's a lot of stuff going on with this. I'm really interested in seeing how the ancient, the antique bronze bullion works out. Like, if it's if it's useful, if you can get good stuff with it, and how it works. Um but we should probably start mentioning one thing that's also involved in season four it hasn't actually dropped yet. Um, on May seventh, the last content patch for Dragonflight, and this isn't the pre-patch for the next expansion, but this is kind of setting the stage for the next expansion. It's called Dark Heart. Um, we're going to see a bunch of stuff. There's going to be Troll and Draenei Heritage armor finally. Um, I don't know why they put this this one. This one feels like this is pretty thin gruel to put in your pose, guys. But uh, six new hair colors for Colterans. I mean, okay, good, but I, I really feel like <laughs> that's not not really what I would put in the press release. But regardless, but this one, all max level characters can get all the quests regardless of your faction reputation, which means you don't have to grind to like level like ten with the you know worm scale or whatever to to get quests to to do that uh it essentially becomes much easier to just do all the quests and get stuff knocked out uh now which is nice for people who have not been playing but are coming back it's that kind of thing uh if you if you've ever like taken some time off from the game and then come back and you'd be like i have no idea what i'm doing now you can get your rep stuff up faster Go ahead, Liz. i've i've been playing i've been playing the whole time and i don't know what i'm doing there are so many quests this expansion so much going on I cannot disagree with that. Um, this is really hard to. Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the new the new talents for uh, the War Within, and some of them are actually kind of hard to, to understand. Looking at them, it's weird. But we don't want to talk about that yet. So uh, yeah. Um, also on May 16, we've got the WoW Remix Missa Pandaria event, uh, which is Plunderstorms till the end of the month, right? Uh, yes, uh, Plunderstorm, which is a uh living out your pirate fantasies of murdering your fellow players and collecting transmog, the most important point, is uh, until April 30th. And uh, 
we do have a double reputation until April 30th. So in what Blizzard is called a plunder surge. Yeah, because I, everything I, needs a name. Everything needs a funny name. So. Yeah, it's like thunderstorm, plunder surge. It's like at this point, it's like <laughs> it's like a it's like an eighties hair metal band. <laughs> like <laughs> I actually, and I say this as someone who listened to them. Uh, I keep remembering like the 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 thrashier of the hair metal bands, like bands like Overkill, had songs that sounded like plunder right. surge. That just sounds like that kind of. But thing. Uh, yeah. it is very 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 fast to get plunderstorm reputation right now. So. Uh, even if you haven't jumped in, you could possibly still get there. And uh, there are some cool transmogs, so check it out if you can, if you're interested. I wasn't interested, but I managed to get up to Renown 40 and collect my cool pirate coat and my parrot, and I am set for transmog. Doing good. Cool. Uh, we should also mention, though, that once that's over, yep. again, on on the 16th, we're getting the WoW, WoW Remix Miss of Pandaria where you basically just need to level up from like one to say 60, one to 60, actually, actually all the way one to 70 uh, yeah. in, in Miss of Pandaria. You can basically be like playing just, just a remixed version of Miss of Pandaria. I, I did not see this coming. We didn't talk about it last week very much because, you know, big. Alpha I, news. I, <laughs> I don't think we talked about it at all. Yeah. Uh, and, but yeah, it's on the wow roadmap. It had something called a time running pandemonium on it. And I kind of figured, okay, it's some sort of time walking event, I guess. Maybe it'll uh, be some sort of special pander in time walking. But no, it, they threw this at us. Kind of is, I guess. I mean, yeah. You're so in uh, WoW Remix, Mists of Pandaria, you will be starting a new character at level 10 and leveling all the way to level 70. You'll only be in Pandaria, nowhere else. It's an accelerated leveling experience, and you will play through all. The, you'll have the opportunity to play through all the dungeons, scenarios, raids. The raids have kind of a different level tier. They aren't all yeah, aren't they, away until like, seventy. Yeah, isn't like yeah, some, they're some like, are like kind of like they're doing in in uh, WoW Classic season of Discovery. They're they're like yeah. at level 40, 50, and so on. There are, there are some level up raids that you can jump into while you're leveling, and I I think it sounds like a lot of fun. There are also going to be also, like Season of Discovery is doing, uh, some unique powers you can collect by collecting gems that you can put in your gear that will have certain unique, different powers you can apply to yourself. Uh, you will have... Okay, my brain totally went blank there. Uh, you'll be able to do dragon riding in Pandaria. So it's like you're going in with a modern retail character, but you are leveling up to 70. You're and uh, you've got some unique, cool powers. There's lots of transmog to collect. There are lots of new mounts to collect. Most of them are recolors or alternates of old Pandaria stuff, but tons of stuff to collect, tons of appearances to buy. Y'all yeah, know that been, I am always in here in it for the transmog. Yeah, if you've been trying to get Galleon and you haven't gotten him, Son of Galleon, then there's probably going to be a recolor of that. Um, Joe. You and I uh, ran the Pandaria dungeons for a bit when we were leveling, right? I'm yeah, we did. Insane. No, you are not insane. And uh, I remember tanking in not just Storm Stout Brewery. Uh, I think it was actually that one, obviously. But I remember the one with you go in and it's it's like not Mogashan Vaults. I think it's Mogashan Palace. Yep. Where where mm -hmm. you basically like have to chase them down the staircase. Yes. And I remember you were frost shocking that guy. <laughs> I just remember watching you frost shock him and he's still running and you're like frost shock, frost shock. Uh, so are you looking forward to healing those dungeons again or, or you think it'll be boring for you like it was then? No, I'm looking forward to it. I actually really enjoyed Miss of Pandaria in general. Um, I really enjoyed the dungeons. I thought they were some of the most fun dungeon design they've had in years. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm very excited to, uh, you know, go back to it and kind of, you know, have it be relevant. I'm interested to see how people deal with stuff like Jade Palace, which had interesting flow dynamics. Like well, you could, if time walking you is any indication, we're going to be in for a lot of pain. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> but, I mean, it's interesting because I th honestly feel like Cataclysm Dungeons were still still felt like Wrath of the Lich King, hmm. even though they had they had different you know settings and so forth, but the mechanics didn't feel that much different. 
Sometimes they were very painful, but the, the mechanics didn't feel different. But Pandaria was the first time I remember doing a dungeon that had a very specific flow in, a, in an area around the thing. Like you were doing mm-hmm. a ring and mm-hmm. you could do, you didn't have to go in the ring. You didn't just have to circle. You could cut across and, and go down other paths and so forth, but it controlled the way you got to each boss. And mm-hmm. there was that last boss who um, just really hard to do. Um, I, I always had trouble on that one. Uh, not that it was bad or anything. It just, you know, I, I had difficulty with it. Although not the last boss, the, the boss who was the gateway to the last boss, I want to say. The the big dragony thing. Um, there's just a lot of interesting design to the dungeons. I'm not even talking raids. Uh, I'm just talking the dungeons in Mists of Pandaria. Like, well, the dungeons Shadowpond are- Monastery is one of my favorites. The dungeons and and mists were really tied to the zones too, and they were tied to the story mm-hmm. of the zones. Mm-hmm. So, like it was a lot of times, and we talked about this in the past. Dungeon design felt almost tacked on, or felt out of place depending on when they came in, um, or like what relevancy they had to the rest of it. And like Wrath was really good for that, right? Like it it the the dungeons did a good job, but maybe not the best job. Mists of Pandaria, on the other hand, was probably when they did the absolute best job tying all of the dungeons into not just the story of the zones themselves, but the greater arcing story of the entirety uh, of the expansion, right? Because mm-hmm. like yeah, it, each each one moved the velocity along. Uh, so mm-hmm. like I'm for that alone, like where you're talking about that flow, that sort of like it's almost like a presence about it. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm with you. Yeah, there's a, there was a directedness, I would say. Like, uh, well, the one that comes to mind is, I, I mentioned Shadowpan earlier. Shadowpan, to me, has always been, it, it feels like you are running willy-nilly all over the place, but it actually goes, like, from place to place and uses the space of the place. It doesn't feel like, oh, we designed this weird place and now we've put bosses in it. It felt like this is a monastery, and unfortunately, it now mm-hmm. has monsters infesting it. It doesn't like when you go out to the terrace to fight that, that one guy, it doesn't feel like you're fighting him there because this was a boss stage. It feels like you're fighting him there because he went out on the terrace, hmm. you know, and that's where he is. You, you know, you found him now it's time to fight him. Cause you know, where are we going to do? Let him leave and go find some other place he wants to fight. That doesn't really seem like we, something we should do. And yeah, I, I think that cataclysm had the problem of trying to, because it was trying to do two things at the same time. It was trying to give like a completely revamped one to sixty experience, uh, mm-hmm. while also doing the the, the eighty plus experience is eighty to eighty five, I think, because Cataclysm was weird that way. Um, they're doing that in Cataclysm Classic, right? They're doing the eighty to eighty five thing. Like it's they haven't done any kind of like you know level squish. It's 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 Cataclysm Classic. It's Cataclysm yeah. again. So. There was always that weird feeling of, okay, now these dungeons are the ones we've changed because we've changed the whole world versus these dungeons are the ones who are there because they're involved in the story of the actual story of the expansion. And there was a lot of weird push and pull on that. I think you're right that Mr. Pandaria really did that well. But uh, anything else we should say about uh, WoW Remix here? Like anything that we, uh, we feel like we need to talk about, Liz? I do want to say you cannot get the legendary cloak in WoW Remix, but you can pick up a toy that gives you legendary cloak appearances and will also let you into Ordos. I think I'm saying that right? Yeah, Ordos. On the Timeless Isles, if you did not get the legendary cloak originally. I am one of those people. I never got the legendary cloak in Miss Pandari because I quit the game for a while in Cataclysm and I only came back kind of mid to late Miss and I just never, never got all the way there with the legendary cloak, even with that really long dead time at the end of the expansion. Well, so, I mean, if you, if you knew people who were like, if you knew all warlock, uh, that hmm. they could summon you to it. Um, so that's how I got there until I got my cloak. Hmm. And then I was of course there every week for six years. <laughs> <sighs> Ordos. It's always Ordos. You know, so he I never mean- did drop that stupid shoulders for me. He <laughs> never did. He never dropped those shoulders. I only mm, got them because they were on the auction house and my guild basically threw gold at me. Like, no, no, take more money. You have to buy this. And I was having a bidding war with some guy who was trying to get them. And I'm like, dude, why do you want them? I get why I want them. But, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I digress. Although it will be cool to see my shoulders again, guys. You get to see them. Um, after, you know, WoW Remix again, it's May 16th. Then we, Plunderstorm, as we talked about, it, it's almost over. 
Uh, so that's that's not anything we really can talk about. But I do want to talk a bit. Oh, go ahead, Liz. It is interesting looking at like the WoW schedule coming up here. So yeah. we just had uh, Dragonflight Season 4 drop. Then on uh, May 7th, patch 10.2.7. On May 16th, WoW Remix, Mist of Pandaria. On May 20th, Cataclysm Classic. We're just having this absolute glut of content. And this yeah. weird moment where Mists of Pandaria and Cataclysm are crashing into each other. So whatever kind of WoW you like to play, you can play it. It's going to be there in May. I was actually going to put this out to both of you. And then I thought, no, it's stupid. It sounds stupid. But, you know, I'll, I'm okay sounding stupid. Do you think they've basically, at this point, it feels like they've embraced the Diablo season model for mm -hmm. WoW. And they've decided, why don't we have it even more of it? Like we'll have season of discovery and we'll have the wow remix is essentially a season of its own where mm -hmm. you play a character up to seven, up to 70 in just Pandaria. And then you're going to have like the, the, the idea of this is we know they're going to do other events, but we don't know what they are. Um, and you wonder like, what's, what's the next thing they're going to do? Like, do you think they're going to see more stuff like this? Or do you think they're going to go in some other weird direction? Like they did with Plunderstorm. I'll throw that to Joe first and then Liz can come in. And then if I, if there's, room i guess i'll say something i don't know if they're fully embracing that model i think they're still trying to find their balance um but they're getting closer to it i mean that's that's really and we talk about it a lot like in, in engagement is a dirty word uh mm -hmm. sometimes when we talk about it but there's nothing wrong with trying to find a model that constantly interests people in playing your game and that's that's generally where engagement i think is fine <laughs> um, when you're trying to keep them trapped there for no reason, that that's bad. Um, but if you're doing cool things or releasing content or seasonal modes or things like that, that make people want to play, that's great. I'm all for that. Um, but I still think they're trying to find their, their perfect balance. I think they're getting closer though. Um, and I don't know if that'll ever, once they find it, I don't know if it'll ever stay that way. Uh, there's also an equal chance that they'll have to adjust that uh, multiple times, depending on the type of people that are playing the game. So Liz? I think Blizzard has embraced the idea that there is no one version of WoW that everyone will love forever because there are the people who prefer vanilla WoW, even with everything else out there. They like vanilla WoW. There are going to be people like me. I like the modern game better. I like the way it streamlines some things. And there are going to be people who are like, oh, I played the modern game for so long. What if I go back to Cataclysm? That sounds really fun. Or what if I go back to Mists of Pandaria? That sounds really fun. Oh, I'm going to level a new alt. Why don't I do it in Mists instead of doing it somewhere else? So it really used to be that there was there was one WoW. There was one way to play WoW. Then we got WoW Classic. Then we got uh, WoW Classic's first season. I'm blanking on what it was called now. It's been a while. It kind of changed the game mechanics. And later we got Season of Discovery, which has really changed the game mechanics. We've had Burning Crusade Classic, Wrath Classic, we're, we're about to get Cataclysm Classic. We have in World of Warcraft already has a seasonal model, though it's pretty, you know, it's pretty basic compared to something like Diablo. But as you said, we've had Plunderstorm. Now we're getting WoW Remix. I think they're just, they're really embracing the idea that there's no one way to play. They really want to keep putting out content that players will find fun, even players that have vastly different in interests. Because World of Warcraft is a huge game. It's 20 years old now. It's, uh, you're gonna have people with different interests who like different things about the game. And I think Blizzard is committed to bringing us that. To bringing everyone an experience they can enjoy. Which means having a whole bunch of different Warcrafts. Which means Warcraft is becoming six games in a trench coat. Which, uh, I think it's working well. My only concern about it is whether Blizzard can keep up the pace. And so far, they've been managing. So we'll see. Well, that whole saying, the multiple games in a trench coat, always reminds me mm -hmm. of Hearthstone. And we yes. do have some stuff to talk about Hearthstone in. So I am going to like you know lob the Hearthstone stuff at you because <laughs> I'm having a hard time getting my email to open, quite frankly, uh, to, to tell me what it is I'm supposed to say. So take, take it away, Liz. <laughs> And so Blizzard has made a change to weekly quests in Hearthstone recently, and it they said they were doing this because people don't really engage with the weekly quests. Weekly quests were usually something like, 
uh, play five games of Constructed Hearthstone, or uh, play 50 Battlecry cards. They're, they're things you could just do and play the game, and they'd sort of happen. You maybe had to do a little work to complete some of them, but usually they just happen. Blizzard said, well, people aren't engaging in these quests, so they decided to make the quests more difficult. Which, mm, okay, so they went and that play five, uh, win five games quest became win 15 games. And to match with this, they increased the experience you got from these, but they tripled the difficulty while increasing the experience gained by 30%. So what they're asking is for a huge additional commitment of time. Winning five games of Constructed, I am not a really good Constructed Hearthstone player, so if I wind up with that quest, it takes me a lot of time to win five games. Winning 15 games, I'm probably just not going to bother. You know, a casual Hearthstone player could have difficulty doing these quests because it can take a while. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of backlash with that. So Blizzard was like, okay, we hear you. We hear you. We're, we're going to dial it down. So now quests are only twice as difficult as they used to be while giving you 30% additional rewards. And it really feels like like engagement bait, if that makes sense. It feels oh, yeah. like... This is the, the Joe, bad engagement. Joe was talking about good engagement. Yes, right. yes. Joe was talking was talking a few minutes ago about engagement as a dirty word. This feels like the engagement is a dirty word because they aren't trying to make something that's fun and actually engaging that you want to do. They've just increased the difficulty of doing your everyday in-game stuff and not increased rewards to compensate. So that's a real frustrating change. And even when they backed down... Still, tw still twice doing... as much yeah twice as much yeah. effort for 30 percent twice more yes it, it, so it just feels bad and i think all of our all of the regu regular hearthstone players over here at team blizzard watch have been like i guess i'm just not doing these quests anymore because i you know yeah, they take a lot of work and they're just yeah. trying to it's counterproductive to the thing they say they want yeah they, they're like you know people aren't really engaging with these so we're gonna make you not want to engage with them even harder <laughs> Exactly. Like, we're gonna make you and hate these quests. You'll never do them. Like, it's it's is this like, reverse psychology. Like you're trying to get me to mm. like. I, I get some people that would work for, but not not most. <laughs> it's interesting. They said the problem was that people don't engage in the quest, but they didn't respond by making the quests something more engaging or interactive. They just made them more difficult. They just increased the numbers. So where you had to ki you had to do X number of battle cries. Now you have to do triple the number of battle cries to to complete this quest and it's it's really disheartening because i do find hearthstone is a fun game i really enjoy hearthstone battlegrounds but it's really disheartening to see the developers chasing engagement without adding like gameplay that's worth engagement it, it's the, just if we're going to keep using the word engagement because we have to because they they've decided mm, yeah that's yeah it's like if you're going to tell us that you know we're going to we're going to value engagement as a metric. You need to make it engaging. Yeah. If it's yeah. not engaging, we're not going to engage with it. That's the point. Uh, so yeah, it, it is, it is baffling to me. It is baffling. Um, but on the subject of Hearthstone Battlegrounds last week, when everything happened, uh, Hearthstone rolled out Battlegrounds duos and Battlegrounds season seven. Yeah. Which, and a, uh, an example of the perfect time to do that. <laughs> the exact it's, same time you're putting out the War Within Alpha. That's a brilliant time to do this big thing in Hearthstone. Yeah, Congratulations, Blizzard, guys. Blizzard has never, you know, kind of slowed its role because one game is doing something. Because last week we had Warcraft Rumble, Rumble, a new Warcraft Rumble season. We had a new Hearthstone Battleground season. And we had the War Within Alpha. So you understand what we were talking about last week. It was all the War Within Alpha because that's super exciting these other things are also exciting but it's, we only it's have hard to hype ourselves half, up guys. yeah it's hard to hype ourselves up quite enough to to get into that but uh battlegrounds duos is an interesting concept battlegrounds is an auto battler and traditionally you go in and it's eight players uh free for all you're you play against one and then you you, you keep going up until everyone's eliminated except one person and in battlegrounds duos it's a two player co-op mode so there are eight players divided into four teams, and you're doing the same thing, except you're playing with another player. You could pass cards back and forth. So if you see a card you want to buy, if you see a card that you think your teammate would like, you can buy it and pass it to them. They can pass cards to you. 
you can't, there are some special cards in there. Like there are cards that if you pass them back and forth, they get buffed each time you pass them. So you can toss things back and forth to get the, give them buffs. There are minions that get buffed when you pass things. And just kind of all sorts of interesting mechanics. I think it's really fun, but it's also a little frustrating because Hearthstone is not a game with a lot of communication tools. And you and your teammate can be on the completely different page. You can get a teammate who doesn't mm -hmm. entirely realize it's a co-op mode. Uh, and uh, I keep trying to kill way... you and it doesn't work. <laughs> the only way you can communicate is you can right click on a card and you can mark that card with a question mark, a check mark, an X or a portal icon, which I assume the portal icon would indicate, please pass me this card, sir. I desire this card. But it's it's not a real clear line of communication. And I know on the tablet, I play on my iPad. And to get that menu to come up, you have to you do a three finger tap. So it's an awkward one. It's not intuitive. Arsto never explains how you do it. I had to go to Reddit to find this out. And I've only actually seen in the time I've played duos, I've seen one person, one person use this icon indicator communication system so it's a little iffy but it's a neat game mode i i think it could work i think it could work we'll see if this is something with staying power or something that blizzard shuts down in six months because it could go either way uh, we also uh hearthstone's done a new legendary quest which is interesting because instead of one big legendary quest for all game modes it's you can choose to go down one path of the quest which is focused on Battlegrounds, which has you playing Battlegrounds duos. You win matches of duos, you participate in battles of duos, you do this or that to finish these quests, and in the end you will earn a Golem Curator skin. I love playing Curator, so I'm, I'm working on that. Or you can play a version that's focused on traditional constructed Hearthstone, in which case you'll get quests to win battles of constructed hearthstone and things of that nature and you'll get card packs and a urel paladin skin that you can use in constructed uh, i think it's interesting that they're kind of making these divergent quests that cover multiple gameplay styles i like it because it means i can play more battlegrounds and less constructed while still getting rewards so uh that's cool that'll be available for a couple weeks if you want to jump into hearthstone and check it out your weekly quests are unfortunately still more difficult to complete, but uh, maybe you'll finish one by accident while you play. All right. Um, we should also mention um, that we didn't mention this last week, but World of Warcraft, uh, micro it's basically Blizzard, Microsoft, and NetEase have come to an agreement where by summer of this year, Blizzard games should be back in China. Um, the press release doesn't talk very much about exactly what went into this, it's a little vague. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's this is probably because no nobody wants to upset anybody by you know saying you know they finally stopped being a jerk. Um, but mm -hmm. you know the the thing is is that basically launch details are coming out soon. Supposedly NetEase has confirmed it. They've already signed the partnership agreement, but the company is going to have to basically get their technical stuff ready because apparently they just they just took down the server room. I mean. <laughs> It it sounded like this was a very bad breakup. Like Nettie's posted a video of their employees destroying a giant gore howl statue they had outside the office. Yeah. It was th this was like not an amicable end of a contract. No, no, it was not. Um, apparently, however, at least Nettie's <laughs> kept the data, um, so people will be getting them when their servers go live again. So if you've stopped playing in 2022 because you play in China and you couldn't anymore. Hopefully your character will still be there. Um, you've missed pretty much all of Dragonflight, right? I'm pretty sure uh, you missed all of Dragonflight. Yeah, yeah, they missed all of Dragonflight. But NetEase has said they're going to have some sort of accelerated Dragonflight experience. They're going to have something so you can experience Dragonflight, even though we're about to go into a new expansion. Well, plus, I mean, I mean, games like Diablo 4, you also didn't get. So, hey, you guys will get to play yeah. that now. Uh, but yeah. You know, Microsoft has also announced a plan to bring NetEase's other gaming titles to the Xbox console. So I guess that might have been the carrot I, that uh, I, got NetEase to to come back and sign some papers. I think I do feel like Microsoft money probably played a role in this. 
Uh, I'm waiting for Joe to say something because usually when I need somebody to say something, you know, darkly interpreting corporate America, Joe is here for me. So I Joe. actually don't have much in the way of comments on this one. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it, it's I mean, it is what it is. Um, we're not going to know what happened behind closed doors. Like, that's just the reality of it. Um, there definitely was some wheeling and dealing because that's the only way anything like this ever goes through. What yeah. the terms mm-hmm. of that are, we'll never have any idea. Did it until somebody Mike? writes a book in a few years? If they, if they, yeah. even, yep. if they, well, the the problem is if they do because it depends on who was involved in it and where most of that data lives. So that data lives in like mostly with Netties in China. We ain't learning anything ever. Like it's just it's just, it's sort of like a black hole when it comes to like corporate dealings like that. Um, we. Go ahead. We do know that uh, Jason Jason Schreier is uh, publishing a book about Blizzard. Mm-hmm. I believe we'll do it. Be, I believe do it later this year. I don't know if it will include China stuff, but uh, could be an interesting read with at least some stuff behind the scenes. Cool. Uh, yep. But I will also point out. I just want everyone to know the games. Apparently, apparently, this isn't just like the various games you might think of. It's not just Hearthstone and WoW and the Diablo games. Uh, apparently, even StarCraft and you know Heroes of the Storm are going to be playable in in China again. I mean, they don't even want to let us play it here, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I I honestly, I still, I I don't want to, I don't want to make you feel too bad, Corey. Uh, but it's dead. Let it go. <laughs> let it go, Corey. It's dead. Let it go. He, he won't let it go. Uh, no, he, right now he's already planning to like you know come to my house and like put up a giant billboard saying "Heroes of the Storm will never die." Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a game we play. Well, uh, there actually was a Heroes of the Storm patch. Yep, mm-hmm. I know. Uh, oh, on I know. The PPR on April sixteenth. So you know they're playing a will they won't they game here. Yeah, if they can get you, if they can get Corey frothed up enough, and he he then goes forth and gets everyone else frothed up enough, they they can see how much interest there is. Because if if there's money to be made, Microsoft is not going to say no to it ever for any reason. Um, so yeah, but that's if you if you've been waiting to 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 play those games in China, uh, congratulations, you'll get to. And uh, if you're curious to see what NetEase is bringing to the Xbox in return, um, they get a lot of games, guys. Nitties has a yeah. lot of games, so we will see. Yeah, we'll see what we get. I know that there's probably going to at least be a couple of of you know kind of action role playing type games coming because um, they do a lot of those. Uh, but for now, we don't really know any more than that. I'm going to see what else is in the email so I don't forget. We okay, cool. We should mention, although you know Joe's been sick, so he hasn't really been able to play it yet. But Overwatch Two Season Ten is now live. Um, and Venture, the new hero, uh, is playable. So if you've been interested in Venture and Venture's whole deal, you you have a chance to play it and see about what what Venture brings to the table. Uh, I when I one thing I do remember from an interview I read is that Venture is similar in a way to Doomfist in that they completely change the way combat movement works. Mm-hmm. And I think I heard that from Joe actually, because um, <laughs> Joe is usually the person I hear from. But regardless. Uh, just wanted you to know it's there. Um, also, you get free five free, free uh, tier skips from Amazon, but that's basically it for the month. And it's it's really not super exciting that, that we're going to get some tier skips. I think so. Uh, also, yeah, uh, War Within Alpha exists. Uh, we talked about it last week a lot, so I don't think there's anything new to say at this point. I know they're going to. I I can feel that they're going to do another build real soon, but I do. They- there's not one at the moment. Blizzard has talked about doing new builds weekly, but I don't know exactly when those are going to go out. Yeah. Uh, Based on my track record, it's going to be tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably so. Or later tonight. That's uh, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like literally the second but, we, uh, we log off, it'll start. There, you know, We're still missing a lot of hero talent builds for certain classes, like poor Joe with just one shaman talent tree. Uh, but we're supposed to, we're going to get more. We're going to get more. We're going to get more zones. There's only one zone open up right now. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to keep playing through it as soon as Blizzard gives us more stuff to play. Yep. Uh, but I think at that point, we're going to move on to doing a couple of these emails. Uh, so if you've got an email for the podcast, uh, please send it to podcast or Blizzard Watch uh, with the subject line podcast or Blizzard Watch so we know it's for us. I think I just did that twice, but uh, <laughs> podcast, you know, podcast at blizzardwatch.com. And uh, you can also use our Discord. We've got the uh, Q and patron, Q and uh, Q and podcast questions channel, which is for everybody, and the patron Q and podcast questions channel, which is for patrons because you guys help us 
keep doing this and we appreciate that. Consider it a hug, but we, we still hugging you other guys. We just got to hug them first because you know, <laughs> money. Um, we've got three here. Uh, one of them is kind of, I, I kind of feel like it wasn't a serious question, uh, but I'll answer it anyway. <laughs> but I want to go with one that's actually, you know, somewhat related to the game. This one's from KTS story. Um, question for the blizzard watch podcast i was looking through my bank thinking about what i'm going to be able to offload into my war bank and noticing some things that i hope will get added to the list that are soul bound right now like mm. protoform synthesis glimmers and mechagon crafting materials is there anything you're carrying around that you hope uh, can get changed so it can go in the war bank joe so it's weird i have gone through like a marie kondo decluttering phase with my bank <laughs> this expansion um the only things i keep are things from like quests that i will never do again or can never do again like i will never get rid of my hunter's uh quiver the blue sinew quiver i don't need it anymore <laughs> literally no reason to have it never gonna delete it from my banks ever period i went through hell to get that thing uh, same with the staff and the, uh, the bow. I will never get rid of them because they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and I went through hell to get them. But as far as like weird soul bound items, I don't generally keep them. Once the expansion has gone past, if I don't have an immediate use for them, I just trash them. So I, I don't know. Like it's not really something like Mechagon crafting materials. I've got none of them in my bank as an, like an example. Those are all gone. Like, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm not the right person for this one because I've been actually trying to reclaim bag space and bank space. Liz? Um, I, I expect that items of that sort, you know, crafting materials, uh, will become warbound in the future. That's, I don't know that, but that's my guess. Because that is the purpose of the warbank, is to open these things up. The purpose of warbands in general is to open things up, so it's you, the player, have accomplished something, not you, one specific character, have accomplished something. So it would make sense if drops like this that are for crafting, particularly stuff that's yeah, for crafting cosmetics and things of that nature, collecting pets, like a lot of the crafting materials from Mechagon, and um, blanking on that zone in Shadowlands. But a lot of the materials you mentioned... Zareth Mortis? A lot of the Zareth Mortis. A lot of that stuff is things that you will use to make cosmetics, to make things that are fun. And it would make a lot of sense to be, to give access to these things to all of your alts. So it's about your achievements, not your achievements on one specific character. And let you switch that around. Will they go back and change all of these old crafting materials that are soulbound? Mm, I, I don't know. They may not do it on day one, but maybe they'll do it on day 100. It's possible, but I I feel confident that they will change how these soulbound crafting materials work in the future and let them be accessible to all of your alts. I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. Yeah, for me, um, most of the stuff I collect is soulbound, and I know it's not going to be unsoulbound. Uh, and because they made changes to the transmog system, so you wouldn't have to do this, but I still do it. Um, I collect weapons. And when I get them, I keep them forever. I do not let them go. They are in my bags or in my bank. Would I like to be able to put them in my war bank? Yep. Uh, cause I, I, my banks, my banks, a horror show. Uh, there's, there's never, there's only one person I've ever met who played world of Warcraft who had a worse bank than me. And even then it wasn't much worse. Like, like we were comparable. Um, so yeah, I, there's lots of stuff I would like to put in, but the only one I'd really love to put in would be all those weapons, but it, they're never going to make it so I can just stick them in. They're not going to be buying to account because then I could send, you know, various things. They'd have to put level requirements on them all. Uh, or otherwise I'd be like sending them to my characters as I level them <laughs> up and they don't want to do that. So yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think I'm going to basically just be stuck with those things in my bank forever. Um, but in terms of crafting materials, I just always do what Joe did. Um, if they're soul bound, like I think some of them you can trade, but, other was, you know, I just, I get rid of them. Like if I, if I can, I'll sell them. If they don't sell, I will just throw them out because I'm not using them anymore. And I just, this, this is taking up space that could be a weapon or it's taking up space in a, in a mats bag that could be for a mat I'm actually using. 
So yeah, that I, that I tend to toss away. But I do think there's way too many crafting items that are soul bound. Like I, I understand you want to make it so people can't just go to the auction house and buy them. Uh, but I feel like making it so I can't send them to my alts and then I have to do like a, a crafting order to use them. That that got really weird really fast. Did either of you have to do that? Like you've got a character who can make the thing, but they have to do it and send it via crafting order to your character mm. because because of the soul bound, therefore you can't like mail it. I've done that a half and I've, I've done that a couple times, yeah. Yeah. So it was yeah. just it was really annoying to me. But but regardless, I I don't think the war bank is gonna change for, for my my needs. That's that's my Go ahead, Liz. I heard you talking. But nope, you're not. nope. It's gone. It's gone. The Sorry. thought in my head is gone. All right. Well, we've covered that one. Um, we've actually got a fair amount of time left. Usually this is not happening. So I'm going to go to the last one, which uh, is fairly long. So at least it's long. Um, greetings, watchers of the Microsoft subsidiary. Uh, That's us. That's thanks, us. Thank you. Um, considering we are he- nearing the end point of the current expansion and barring a massive last minute story or game mechanic alteration, have the changes in Dragonflight shaken up how you view the expansion and the history of the game? Do you find yourself uh, being more nostalgic for things you hated when it was current content? I've been playing <laughs> through the Battle for Azeroth story on a new character, and I have come to realize that the story alone had me enjoying it as much as Legion. MOP and Wrath. Even though I already know where things are headed, the story is emotionally powerful and keeps me playing just to see what happens next, even though I saw it all when it was current. Uh, I even enjoy the Hearth of Azeroth mechanic now that it's not the defining aspect of character ability and customization. It's a good complementary mechanic that doesn't create a massive weakness when it's gone. Uh, ignoring the story elements, I've become less nostalgic for Vanilla and Burning Crusade because I can see how refined gameplay has become. I do still miss some of the grind. I feel like that kept us from rapidly reaching max level and losing interest in the game because of repeated raid slash dungeon burnout uh, waiting for new content. The slow burn kept me engaged with the in-game world while approaching max level and end-game content. At the same time, Changes in my own life over this same time help me understand why these quality of life changes have been made over the years, over the past censored for my own sanity years. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut that out because yeah. Yeah. I, I get the on that one. Every so often I remember, yeah, I remember in 2004 when I made my first character. Oh God, pain, pain stabbing <laughs> me in the soul. So yeah, I get you. Um, having to choose between my family and a game would make me miss my family terribly. I'm kidding. Maybe. Uh, so, watchers, has the WoW nostalgia bug bitten you in a way you would have le- least expected it to when the content was current? Uh, sincerely, Green Jeebus, Holy Goblin Priest of Thrall slash US, Zarathos, Human Demonology Warlock of Fizzcrank slash US. Um, either one of you guys want to go first? Because if you don't, I'll have to pick one of you. <laughs> I guess Joe, I'm picking say you. something. Right, Joe. Um... No, (laughs) Uh, it's weird. So I don't get nostalgic or look back overly fondly at game mechanics. Um, And this may be me being a little full of myself and feel free to, you know, give me that free engagement of telling me how how full of myself I am. I think I'm fairly objective for the most part when it comes to game mechanics, when they're they're there um, and current. So like the Heart of Azeroth is a really good example. The um, the. Uh, Azerite armor that we we did that we had to deal with the nightmare corrupted stuff that we had to deal with like I can objectively look at them and you know understand what they were doing or what why they were good or bad at the time and then have my own feelings on them based off of how I play the game but I don't think I'm ever really like overly nostalgic I don't go man that heart of Azeroth sure was good um, or man I love borrowed power systems they're just fantastic I don't generally look back at them with any sort of like fondness. I just kind of accept them for what they are at the time and sort of move on with my life. And, and you know, that's really it. The things that make me nostalgic in the game are not necessarily the game itself. It's the people that I have those experiences with. So like yeah. vanilla, I and mean, I've talked about this with classic, right? Like I don't miss classic grinding. I don't miss, running halfway across the world because I needed five more damn gold to buy a horse. Um, You know, I don't miss those days. What I do miss is 
you know, getting a bunch of people together and, you know, getting together with like folks like, and I'm going to drop a name here that old timers from Zul'jin will remember, like old Ironsides and going into PVP battle with them in South Shore and like being on Ventrilo or, um, I can't even remember what the one that came after Vent was, but there was another Team one. Speak. There was Team Speak. There was Vent. And there was another one. Um, but like going on these and like, oh yeah, I, I remember it too, but I don't remember the name. But like hopping on and just like chatting with these people and like making these connections and friends that lived all the way across the world uh, and across the United States and people that I never would have gotten to interact with at that age where I was playing this game. Those are the things I miss. Those are the parts that I'm nostalgic for. I don't miss grinding, you know, nature resist gear so I could go kill Princess Huron. But I do remember that first Princess Huron kill. It, it, like the, the, this is the nostalgia bug, right? I was just moved into my brand new apartment on Elmwood of of Buffalo. Like it was like the first big move I had ever made. First time I had ever gone out on my own. I had no furniture whatsoever. I had like a TV. <laughs> I had like folding chairs. I had like uh, TV tables, and I had like a 13 inch white MacBook. That's what I gamed on at the time. I didn't even have a full <laughs> gaming setup. Uh, and so I'm like, I'm sitting there in my like empty living room with like my three cats, my, you know, TV the, the up on the, like the fireplace because it's the way it was positioned, sitting in this camping chair at a TV tray, killing Princess Huron, and then like just everybody, this tense moment, and then we finally get it. And this like elation and screaming from everybody on vent uh you know because we finally did it after all this we finally accomplished this thing and then knocking my tv tray over and uh completely smashing the screen on my 13 inch macbook and then having to physically replace it uh the next day like i those are the things that i'm nostalgic for because those are memories that are associated with it but i don't miss the mechanics like that nothing really really does that and then the story itself is what interests me and for obvious reasons like you've listened to lore watch you know that when lore watch was born there's a reason that i was involved from the beginning and it, many late night conversations with matt and ann and taking over other podcasts uh when we were guests on there or in the audience just talking about lore right um yeah and thank you uh cory and chat mumble was the other one thank you very much that was the one i couldn't remember um but like the story beats, but those are just beats for me. Like it's a continuous thing. I don't look back and say, you know, that was, you know, I'm really miss that level of storytelling. No, I like where we're going and I like that these are building blocks. Right. So it's, and when we get to lore watch next week, um, there's a question in there that I think will spark some of that, which is dealing with Alcaz Island and, and like, how important that was at the time and the wild tinfoil hat theories we were coming up with for stuff like that. And like sitting on vent or mumble or team speak and like talking about that with people and friends, those are the things that I'm nostalgic for. And I have talked a whole hell of a lot. So I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm going to drink some of this tea and I'm going to let y'all talk. Please. I mean, there, I got to go with Joe a lot here because it's, less nostalgia for things and more nostalgia for people who I miss, people I wish I was still playing with, people I wish were still around. Uh, but I, I do get a little nostalgic for gameplay mechanics sometimes because it's it's natural to be able to look back and think, oh, those are the good old days. And it's easier to forget the bad things and remember, oh, I really like this. I really liked that. I am on record with really missing talent trees. I, I spent a long time really missing talent trees, and I will also be on record to say that I like the talent trees that came with Dragonflight. They're not perfect. Like everything in life, they are not perfect. There's room for improvement. They're really complicated, and they don't always make your life easy, but I, I, I enjoy them over the previous talent system. So, you know, sometimes you... I mean, that's the whole reason Classic came to it exist, because you would look back on things, sometimes with these rose-colored glasses, and see, like, hey, we had this thing, and it was great, and it was perfect, I want to go back and play vanilla. I, I don't, I'm not quite that hard on the rose-colored glasses, but you can see how a lot of people said, you know, we want to go back to Classic, we want to play the original version of World of Warcraft that was so much better than it is today, and... Uh, Jalen Brack frame famously said, you think you do, but you don't. Yeah, too much, uh, you know, he took a lot of mocking for that. And 
but you saw people go back into classic and they kind of had to start toning down classic to try and recreate the experience of classic without the reality of classic, which could be very difficult, very grindy, lacked a lot of quality of life improvements that we didn't have the knowledge base. Let's not forget that. Yeah. I mean, it world of Warcraft, as we know it today has had 20 years of game development, uh, of improvements of uh, just, it has the advantage of all of that time. It hasn't become perfect over that time period, but it's got more modern features than vanilla did. So we, I, I like to think we've, we've learned over the years. We've learned and grown, and the game has developed into a better game over those years. Is it perfect? No. Was it perfect 20 years ago? Also, no. And I think it's very interesting that Classic has become more of a vanilla spin-off than like a direct perfect recreation because when they first brought it up the goal was perfect recreation and now it's you know they're changing things they're they're changing things for a better gaming experience for an experience that feels like what classic players want to play even if it's not exact to what it was so it's easy to have these rose colored glasses but you can't forget that we've got some good things going now Modern WoW has so many conveniences, quality of life improvements. The Dungeon Finder, for all that you have a very different sense of community in vanilla and in classic, you know, I I do not miss sitting outside of Black Rock Spire, yelling in chat, or having someone else in the party in Stormwind or Ironforge or Orgrimmar, yelling in chat, looking for one more, PST, you know, for hours. You could do that for hours trying to find a group. Just sitting there waiting. And now you open the looking for group interface. You click a button. You're going to be in a group in 10 minutes if it takes that long. So, and that's that's a good thing. Maybe it's kind of spoiled the aspect of community where you know everyone on the server and you talk to each other. Because now we can pull from tons of different servers and just grab anyone without ever saying a word. We may not even remember their names. So, but that's that's good. It means I want to run a dungeon. I can just go and run a dungeon. <laughs> I don't have to sit and wait for two hours because we need another healer. Oh, our tank just dropped. Oh, you know, the rogue just ninja looted something and left. Now we need another DPS. And also the warrior quit because he wanted that thing the rogue took. You know, that stuff used to be really common. Now we don't have to deal with that stuff. You can press a couple buttons, spend a half hour of your time running a dungeon, and log off. You know, that's we're all older than we were when the game launched. None of us have as much time as we used to. And it's good to have quality of life features. It's a big improvement. So why well, was come a long way? And not all of us bad. I would agree with that. And since we are pretty much right up on time, I'm just going to agree with that. And we will just end the show because we can do that and that means you're not going to get to find out about the best female autobot and why it is the elite of one which it isn't it's it's windblade but no. everyone I has a take on that one we'll talk about that later yeah, yeah we'll do a lower watch um but yeah uh joe since you just spoke up on that one uh maybe you could do the thing you do all right hopefully i get through this without coughing blizzard watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash blizzard watch your continued support means that this podcast signing community is able to thrive and grow blizzard watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast better chance at having your question answered on our podcast with the queue and an ads free site experience Woo-hoo! thank you very much joe and thank you for not coughing i appreciate how hard that can be um Thanks to both Joe and Liz for being here on the show with us, uh, as they always are. They help make this a much better experience for me as the host. And that's all that's really important, that I have a good time. Um, that you all have. But I think it's fair to say without these two, the show would be much different and probably much less good. Uh, so thank you, Joe, Liz. Uh, thank you to everyone who who's listening. Um, thanks for being here with us while we do this. This has been the Blizzard Watch Podcast, and we'll be back next week. 